What's going on? Uh, Warriors won yesterday against the Miami Heat. I know I didn't upload a video, but the Heat were down. Jimmy Butler, Tyler Hero, Duncan Robinson. It was essentially Bam Adebayo versus all, and the Warriors won but didn't play that well. I thought Draymond had a solid game. Clay played fantastic, but it was just like, I, I mean... You know what I mean? It, it it didn't prove anything. You know, they staved off falling out of the play in, I guess, but it didn't they didn't prove anything. Road win, sure, but just did you know, not much to really look at. They didn't really test them uh, as far as like, you know, how how are you gonna look on a big stage? But uh this game right here, the Warriors Magic game just ended. Uh and the Warriors won. Now this was Honestly, and I've said this a few times, but you know, things, new information, right? Uh, this is probably the best win of the season. This was probably the biggest test the Warriors have had, the biggest test of just fight, willpower, grit, and, and just overall, you know, putting to the test how badly do you want it? How badly do you want to compete and try and win? Because I haven't been as emotionally attached to a Warriors game as I as I have this one in a very long time. It's been about a season and a half, probably since I've been really attached to a game. And the most attached I was to the, the last game I think I was really attached to was probably that Christmas Day game against the Grizzlies. You know, that was, in my opinion, the last just riveting game like this one here. Um the Warriors beat the Magic in Orlando on a back-to-back, 101-93. Unbelievable performance from Andrew Wiggins. We're going to get into all that. But first off, so uh, I just want to say a big fuck you to Draymond Green. Uh, I've been very, very much in his corner. I think there's a lot of stuff that he does that's stupid and hurts the team that I would never disagree with. But I think the positives always outweigh his negatives. However, tonight, for him to get himself ejected three and a half minutes into the fucking game in a back-to-back on one of the most important games of the season where you're trying to just stay alive to fight for that play-in spot and for you to get ejected over a couple meh fouls that's stupid. That I couldn't I couldn't believe he'd do something like that. You know, I understand it's a rough game. You're playing the, you know, you're playing Phoenix, all that stuff and you know, you're getting frustrated. Nurkic knows how to poke your buttons and all that stuff and and you mollywop them. Is it smart? No, but at least I can kind of understand Draymond Green's thought process there. But three and a half minutes into a road game on a back-to-back where you out Jonathan Kaminga, where Trace Jackson Davis is playing on a relatively okay, kind of hurt knee, you know, Clay just gave you 28, so you don't even know how much he's going to be able to give you tonight, and Steph's playing probably the biggest roster in the league, and one of the most feisty defensive rosters, who's going to have a shitload of problems to deal with, and for you to get ejected three and a half minutes in, nah, man. Nah, that's that was the most unacceptable Draymond Green moment I think I've seen. And I know everyone's like, wow, you must have really weird standards if the punch to Jordan Poole wasn't it and if it wasn't the Nurkic moment. Surprisingly, yeah, I guess my standards are probably weird compared to you guys. But yeah, this one, I couldn't believe it. Steph said it all with his uh, facial expressions and how emotionally attached he was to this game because after he hit that dagger three at the end of this game to put the Warriors up eight, he went over and like kicked down three seats screaming, you know, he was hyped because he knows how big that win was. He knows how important it was. He knows what just went down, how much grit it showed from the team to get something like this done, missing Draymond because of his own stupidity. This was just huge. Uh, and for Draymond to fu- almost fuck it up like that, I, c- I couldn't believe he'd do something that w- uh, do something like that. You know, just a, it's so unprovoked. You know, it's not again. Nurkic pokes buttons. Okay, you saw now. You saw Nurkic's press conferences too. He's not a. He's one of the slimy motherfuckers, right? Like, understand a little bit. Draymond, hothead, easy to get under his skin. But in this one, that was just not okay. That was that. That was just genuinely 
stupid. But I don't even want to talk about that anymore. I want to talk about the fact that the Warriors, and mind you, the Magic are a meh offensive team. They've got good offensive players, but they just lack spacing. Uh, I don't know what they've looked like since January, but for the most part, they've been a really mediocre three-point shooting team, but they've just been such an elite defense. You know, paint defense, perimeter defense. They've got fantastic defenders everywhere. Obviously, having someone like Jonathan Isaac back and healthy, that's been great. Markel Fultz is a really good on-ball defender for guards. Jalen Suggs is having a hell of a season. Dominic and I have talked about him a little bit on the podcast. Like, They've got a lot of defensive versatility, a lot of big, a lot of big size and strength at the center and forward position. Franz Wagner, 6'10, Paolo, 6'10. Like they just got a lot of stuff to, to throw your way. And the Warriors, obviously, being a small team, on top of that, now losing Draymond, who, you know, at least knows how to really play, make, and pass in this offense. So you don't have one of your best passers on the roster. And then Jonathan Kaminga wasn't playing, so one of the only guys on the roster that can just get to the rim, at least in the open floor, you're missing that too. So that was huge, which put a lot of pressure on Andrew Wiggins. You know, a lot of pressure in Andrew Wiggins' play tonight. And we're going to start with him because Andrew Wiggins not only played absolutely elite perimeter defense tonight, but he had his best game as a warrior. I know everyone's going to go back to 2022 in those playoffs and those finals and point to that, but this right here was just an absolutely a transcendent performance from Wiggins. And it, it doesn't even look that elite, but it really was. It really was because not only did he just have himself a really good night, but he did it when, you know, when there wasn't like time for him to kind of slowly get into that role no Draymond went out and Andrew Wiggins just immediately stepped up you know that's something I had none of us have been able to say for Andrew Wiggins in his time as a warrior you know he's not really a take charge kind of guy he's not someone who's typically going to just throw himself into the thick of anything and really make himself the number one that does you don't see that you know I always say every two you know two to three months you're good for an Andrew Wiggins 30 piece tonight Felt like that times 10, and he only scored 23 points, but they were extremely impactful, 23 points. And again, that elite perimeter defense, not to mention a, a perimeter defense, but blocking shots in the paint at the end of the game. I mean, he was just incredible. Andrew Wiggins was incredible. Finishes the night with 23 points, six boards, an assist, two blocks, eight of 17 from the field, three of six from uh, three, and four of five from the free throw line. 35 minutes played, played the most minutes out of anybody on the roster, plus 12, second highest on the team, only two fouls. He was absolutely incredible. Unbelievable performance from Wiggins. Um, and the, the, the number one thing is that even though you could see that Andrew Wiggins had that pep in his step tonight, which is you know something that I talk about a lot with him, which is you can't really even tell if he's engaged or not because he doesn't really have the facial expressions. He's not someone who's like uh, a very emotive person, or he doesn't look like he's flying around, fighting around. Andrew's just a very kind of robotic dude, you know, very no no emotion, robotic kind of guy. So you could kind of see tonight that he had a little bit of extra mojo in there, and he was letting it all loose. And the best part is, is you watch something like this from Wiggins, he didn't even try that hard still. Like he, there was no crazy, okay, this dude's on one right now. It was none of that. It wasn't like a Russell Westbrook kind of thing. Like this was just Andrew Wiggins going from a four out of 10 to like a six out of 10. And look how well he played. He just carried the Warriors into probably their biggest win of the season, you know? all things considered. So Andrew is very capable of playing like this. And we've talked about this so much. We've talked about it so much, but it just, it needs to be consistent, man. He's had a really good stretch of games. These last five or six nights shooting the ball better from three, right? The defense has been spectacular for him. He has nights where the playmaking is really solid or the defense, or I mean, the rebounding solid, like Andrew has just been playing good basketball, 
But to see these last few games where the scoring's up and then he has a night like this where it was like, dude, if it's not you, we're going to lose. And then he takes he takes the baton and goes with it, man. That was awesome. That was awesome. I'm proud of Wiggins. That was a huge, a huge performance for him. You saw after the game, Stephen Curry, Steve Kerr hugging him. I mean, they knew how big of a performance this was from him. And I just, I fucking hope that he just gets it through his head that, hey, man, you didn't even try that hard. You can do this on a nightly basis. 23 points on 17 shots is not much. It's not much, man. You're an ab- He's an elite athlete. He's very capable of doing this on a nightly basis. You know, very capable. Better than Kaminga. I said before, I said before, if Andrew Wiggins plays like Andrew Wiggins can play, then Jonathan Kaminga goes to the bench, man. Because Trace was incredible tonight too. So you sit, you you start Trace, Draymond, Wiggins. That's a solid three right there. That's a solid defensive three that can play smart defense. Trace is a good help defender with Draymond. You know, if you do that, you're solid because Kaminga not being out there, boy, I got to tell you, the defense looked a whole lot better. <laughs> I mean, look, I know with Draymond not being there, the defense played great. So yeah, everyone's going to say, well, look how good they did without Draymond. But Jonathan not being there, you could tell because there just weren't as many mistakes. You know, there just weren't as many mistakes being made and they still had some issues. The switching was still kind of a problem. Mind you, I, I didn't write anything down. I'm not structuring this. I'm just, I just hit record and I'm going. So, you know, bear with me here, but they played solid defense all night. I mean, again, look, the magic are not the best offensive team, but they are much bigger and stronger than the warriors coupled with the guy like Cole Anthony, who dropped like 26, was it? Yeah, 26 points on 10 of 17 shooting, 5 of 8 from 3 in 32 minutes. I mean, he was incredible off the bench. So the Warriors are already having to deal with a team that's much bigger, much stronger, much more physical than you. As you're out, your best defender. As you're out, one of your top three, four players, you know, on top of that, not, you know, being Kaminga. And to go out and win this game, man, and hold them to 93 points, and to actually, I think they won the points in the paint margin. Yeah, they won the points in the paint margin, 54 to 48. It, it was just absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. The closeouts and stuff, as I've said many times, still an issue. Uh, or like poor switches or just, you know, no KYP. You got to know your personnel, man. They're leaving Cole Anthony or Anthony Black open, but they're, you know, they're going full on to contest Mo Wagner shooting threes. It's like, you got to do a better job at knowing who's taking the shots, know who's on the floor. Uh, That's something that the Warriors just still struggle with. But I thought for the most part, everyone on the roster, when they did close out, the closeouts were very strong. They weren't weak. They weren't like, oh, shoot it. I'm not going. It wasn't like that. I mean, Jesus, you had Kavon Looney doing Draymond Green flying closeouts to the corner. You know, that's how much of a intense game this was for the Warriors, which like I've said before, man, you just don't really see games like this that are that emotionally uh, invested from the entire team. So uh, very happy with the defensive performance there. And uh, Andrew Wiggins, again, leading the charge in that route. Next, I want to talk about Steph. You know, Steph had kind of a rough game and it's because this uh, this magic team they are going to throw a lot at you. Jalen Suggs was unbelievable defensively, just making li- Steph's life hell. It, first half, Steph had nothing. He wasn't, he wasn't doing anything. He was about as flustered as you could possibly make him. Um, but in that second half, he only finished with 17 points on 6 of 18 shooting, 3 of 8 from 3. But he dominated that second half, specifically in the fourth quarter, hitting that dagger 3 especially. But four, uh, 10 assists for Steph, only 2 turnovers. Uh, you still in a plus 18, like he's still out there making shit happen, man. You know, in a game like this, where the defense of the, of the magic is just swarming him everywhere he goes, there's a guy, there's a blue Jersey right next to him draped all over him. And for him to just make the right plays, not take a lot of bad shots, get to the rim, making some tough finishes and then hitting clutch threes on a night where again, back to back, 36-year-old Steph, fourth quarter hitting tough threes like that after running around the whole game getting clamped. 
I, I, that's just it's so thoroughly impressive you know what i mean very thoroughly impressive so huge game for steph there uh next i want to talk a little bit about moses uh moses had himself one hell of a night this was another game where you can just see like there are games where it's like god man he doesn't even look like he should be out there and then he has a game like this where he plays unbelievable defense unbelievable on the glass he had one rebound where there were like four of the orlando magic all jumping and then moses comes and flies in snatches the board hits uh hits pajemski pajemski throws it to clay clay hits a three all because of moses moody's rebound also had a put back dunk following up cleaning up the glass like 12 points for mo three board or five boards three assists he was 0 four from three but he was four four from the line four of nine from the field like he was incredible as well. He had to step up because of Draymond. Guy Santos even got five minutes of run because of Draymond. You know, Kavon had to come in. He played great. Four min, uh, four points, seven boards, two of two from the field. Pajemski was three of 10, but he still had an insane game. Six points, nine boards, five, uh, four of which were offensive, an assist, a steal, no turnovers. He played great. He really carried the first quarter a little bit. He had a few really, really big time uh, inside floaters and hooks that went down that, again, in a game where they just they, like they were clamping the magic early on, but they weren't getting anything really either. So for Pajemski to kind of start the uh, start the offense there, that was big time in getting the Warriors going. Uh, you had Trace with eight points, 14 boards, five of which were offensive, three assists. He had a fantastic pass to Moses Moody, who got an and one layup. Uh, late in the game, a steal for Trace, a block as well, a plus five all uh, altogether. He played 33 minutes. He was a good defensive anchor tonight, man. Really was. And you can kind of see, again, you can see the potential. You can see how how good this team can be, you know, how good they can be. But it's the consistency now. You know, a, a game like this is just so, so big for the Warriors. You know, you're not shooting the ball well. You had some stupid turnovers. You lost your second best player because of some stupid bullshit. You know, your second best score is out. What are you going to do with it? You know, you're playing one of the best defensive teams in the league. You have one of the best young players in the league. What are you going to do? How are you going to take this? How are you going to step up in this situation? And I think they showed. I think they showed tonight that they are capable of doing it that they do have that fight and that grit and that tenacity and that will to win, you know? Um, and that's, that's nice to see, man. It's just, it's really nice to see because sometimes, man, you're watching the Warriors and it's just like, I don't even think they want to be out here. You know, they just don't even look like they want it. So uh, again, as far as emotional attachment to a game, I haven't felt this good about a win in a very long time. So that uh that I think says it all. I'm pretty sure if you're a Warriors fan watching this, you probably feel the same way. You know, this was just one of those where they needed it. You didn't feel like it was gonna happen. You thought everything stalled out again and the magic are just climbing back and climbing back and climbing back and climbing back. And somehow the Warriors just get that one last stretch of stops that they just have not been able to get all season. And they get that one last push of offense to just seal the game that they haven't been able to get all season. And they did it with a lot of adversity. It's a great win, man. It's a great win. My point, my last video, my stance on where the team's at remains the same. But as far as like, have they just given up? That's not there. I think they still want it. I think they're still going to fight. But again, we got to... You know, we got to be analytical with it a little bit. We got to we gotta really look at this for what it is. The Magic are a fantastic defense, but they really aren't that high-powered in offense. They've got guys, but as a cohesive offensive unit, they're still really improved. They're trying to get better. They need more pieces to space the floor out. They're clogged up a bit. So we just got, we, we got to take that for what it is, you know? There are going to be tougher matchups than the Magic, tougher ma uh, tougher matchups than the Miami Heat without Jimmy Butler, Tyler Hero, and Duncan Robinson, right? We just, we got to, you know, proud of the win as much as I am, but we got to take it for what it is. So uh, I'm very happy with how this game went, very happy with the performance, and they're going into Texas, I'm pretty sure, to play the not only the Spurs, but 
uh, the Rockets, who are, are playing right now, uh, they're currently down two to the Thunder. Um, this is this is a big stretch of games for the Warriors. This is a big stretch of games. You beat the you, you know you beat the Spurs and you beat the Rockets. The Rockets lose tonight, and then you beat them in the Spurs. You know, huge, huge. And we'll see what happens with Draymond. You know, we'll see what happens with Draymond because again, this was just an unacceptable ejection. So it honestly wouldn't shock me if the Warriors are just like, you're going to sit out for a bit. Like, we're not doing this again. You need to go figure shit out one more time. You're just not learning a lesson. I don't know, but we'll see. Uh, other than that, though, great win. Hope, the, hope you guys are happy with it, just like I am. So uh, with that being said, I will see you guys in the next video. If you're a Warriors fan or if you're a Magic fan, let me know your thoughts down below. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, podcast stuff will be coming soon. We recorded the other day, so I'll be getting that stuff up. But uh, yeah, with that being said, have a good rest of your guys' week, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.